everyone the extension of a very warm welcome. So again, uh, we realized that during this unprecedented time and challenges, uh, you know, COVID-19 would also like pose a very personal challenges to all of us. And we're here from YouTube to help support you, especially in light of digital first events. Uh, we realized that um, there's a huge demand on uh, learning how to actually improve, uh, how to optimize on those search and discovery. So that's why we're actually starting these YouTube webinar series. So again, this would be, um, there would be multiple sessions uh, happening. So please make sure that you watch out for the invitation list from Gina and Pablo. All right, and again, a little bit of the housekeeping rules uh, to make sure that, you know, like we um, have this session peacefully. First off, I would ask everyone to kindly mute yourself so that your voice, your noise wouldn't appear and like become available to the rest of the audience. And secondly, um, again, uh, feel free to disable your camera, but of course I would love to see uh, the participant from all of you. So for those with, uh, extra internet bandwidth, feel free to just leave the camera open. And lastly, um, again, we can also uh, see my presentation. Uh, for those of you who might not be able to see what's going on on what exactly is this Punsak guy is presenting, please make sure you just click on this right hand side on the above. That would be like the two uh, emoticons of the people. So you click on that and then you click on uh, Punsak and presentation. All right, so if you face any challenges in time, we actually have Pablo and Gina moderating. Uh, hopefully, like they would be able to address your concerns while actually presenting my screen. All right, and again, we would love the session to be as interactive as possible. Feel free to each, uh, ask each other questions, uh, introduce yourself uh, among the group. And yeah, we would uh, at least hopefully like uh, give the last 10 minutes for the Q&A session. All right, and yeah, um, again, um, let's also make, at least for my personal record, I haven't really like been speaking to anyone like to more than 200 plus participants ever in my life. So let's make sure we at least like take a screenshot together. And in case you wanna see uh, any other participants from the other countries, from the other companies, feel free to click on the three button and then you can actually click on the change layout right here. All right, so yes, I know that it's 1 p.m. in Singapore right now and I would hopefully uh, guess that like uh, all of you would have already had lunch already. And yeah, food coma is <laughs> one of the first thing that I would expect. So let's actually wake up the room by playing some games together. So for those of you, um, this would be the interactive uh, game sessions. So um, you can actually go to carfood.it. You can access these either your, through your brow, uh, laptop as well as your phone, right? So carfood.it. And after that, you would have to enter the game link. All right. So the game pin right here is 4128718. 4128718. And yes, thanks so much, Gina. I just bring that to the main group chat. So you can just go to kahoot.it as well. We would spend around like five minutes to just uh, evaluate the audience here, right? How much, uh, how many experts do we actually have right here already, right? So far I have got three players. So, oh, seems like it's only three uh, people uh, limit right now, but that's completely fine. Uh, we can actually see who is like the fastest people right here. So what I would do is I would ask everyone to use the group chat to maybe like guess the right answer. All right. Cool. So let's actually get started. So what traffic source contributes the most subsp substantial watch time, right? Is it notification, subscription, suggested video, or trending? All right, use that chat feature, everyone. 
All right. So it seems like majority of the people here still didn't get it correctly. So the majority of the watch time from YouTube is actually from suggested video. So not the trending tab. All right. Cool. So Jewel, um, thanks for being so fast in the sign up process and for answering this correctly. Let's move on to the second question. Which of the following is not the representation of YouTube search result? Is it the list of videos that re reflect users' engagement? Or is it the list of videos that have the highest view? Or is the relevance? All right, seems like we only have one person answering these correctly. All right, so Jubo, oh, wow. You still like remain our number one. So the correct answer here is yes. So we look at uh, the search uh, engagement as well as the relevance. So how should we compare suggested video performance across different videos? All right, it seems like everyone got this correct. Great job, everyone. So yes, to do so, you can just compare traffic source directly using the same duration. And the main reason why I also like put this question is this is one of the major questions that I got like, oh, why is suggested video um, from video X different from video Y? So one thing you should always keep in mind is that you compare Apple to Apple or always compare the same duration in YouTube analytics. Wow. So it seems like Jewel is also like still number one here. So please um, show yourself who you are um, by pinging the group chat. So moving on to the last two questions. What is not a criterion of how home ranks the videos? Oh yeah, so yes. Um, so home does not rank videos based on how frequently uh, creators send notification to the users, all right? So notification is not the factor um, on how we are ranking home currently. And I'll share with you a little bit more in this training session. All right, so it seems like Joe still remains number one. Let's see if Eric Shee can make it on the final question. So what determines notification frequency for subscribers who actually did not ring the bell? All right. Wow, seems like all of us got this correctly. So yes, the answer is actually uh, we look at the engagement rate, right? So like once we send the notification, how often do those particular users actually decide to opt out? Okay, so um, we also like look at how, like the, if we send more notifications and if the users still respond really, really well, we keep sending the notification. All right, so, and the winner here is, Ah, okay. So a big round of applause to like Jewel. Okay, great job right here. Okay. So one thing I learned from this game is that not all of you actually get all the questions correct. So that's no problem. That is exactly why I still get to keep my job. So um, yeah, like for those who, um, would also like be willing to learn more and would be interested in learning more what exactly YouTube search and discovery is all about. So that's what we are here for today. Without any further ado, let me go back to my presentation mode. All right. 
So yeah, um, again, uh, hopefully like by the end of this presentation or if we ever conducted these sessions in the future, we would see some of the five out of five scopes, all right? So the objectives on why we're here today is to learn a little bit more about how our search and discovery works. Uh, secondly, we would also like love to learn some of the ways how your videos are actually being discovered. And thirdly, yes, there are a lot of myths out there um, on how YouTube algorithm works. So this is going to be the first time we clarify those myths together. And fourthly, uh, hopefully after this training, uh, after you understood how our algorithm works a little bit better, uh, then you can actually apply this knowledge into your daily um, and your day-to-day -day operations and your day-to-day -day job. You would know exactly what you should be doing to drive that success of the YouTube channel that you have. All right. So why is this session important? So for quite a few reasons. So firstly, we would love to avoid any content pitfalls that you might have already heard. Secondly, uh, we would also love to explore some new ways. Uh, how can you actually get that user or audience feedback a little bit more through YouTube analytics? And thirdly, we would also like love to help you improve the channel discoverability so that you can for invest time and energy in what matters the most to your audience. All right, so before we start, I would love to give you a quick platform update about YouTube. So as we speak, uh, in every single minute, uh, we actually have more than 500 hours of videos being uploaded every single minute, right? And YouTube is currently now launched and available in 100 countries. And we actually have more than, we have approximately 80 languages um, available in terms of well, product offerings to our users globally, right? So why does this matter? Uh, why does this number matter? What does it tell us? So I would love to look at these into two different segments, right? So 500 plus is actually the supply side, right? We have these many videos available on YouTube. So the main question here is how can we make that one video that you uploaded stand out and make sure that users decide to watch that video. Secondly, YouTube um, is unique in the sense that we actually allows you to reach the international audience, right? Like the content that is available on TV today might just be able uh, to reach or might be available on certain provinces or like uh, nationwide. Uh, but with YouTube, you can actually reach your fans internationally. So again, we would also provide you some tips on how we can uh, help you export the content a little bit better. And secondly, to remind everyone on the YouTube mission, our mission is actually to give everyone a voice and show them the world. From the statistics uh, earlier, we are launched in so many countries. And yes, our opportunity is just really immense. Um, YouTube is just the window to a lot of uh, audience in the international settings. And we would love to continue driving that mission with all of you today. So thirdly, we have actually decided to launch what we call YouTube Partner Program or in short YPP. And why is this important? So uh, let me first uh, take a step back and share with you a little bit more about the YouTube ecosystem, right? So we have the three main stakeholders here. We have the content suppliers or what we call content creators or partners who are actually uh, creating a lot of great content and then they supply that to the platform, right? And through that supply, uh, we also like have the second stakeholder, which is the viewer. So the viewer comes to YouTube to consume and connect with their favorite creators, right? There are a lot of creators out there uh, who come and consume. Uh, there are a lot of YouTube consumers today in, in the YouTube platform. And then this also like attracted uh, or this actually gets the attention of the advertisers who are actually those people who fund the creator ecosystem. This is the group of people who actually help us uh, pay your revenue, right? So with these challenges, uh, like how can we actually balance this ecosystem uh, in the way that would satisfy the needs of everyone? How can we continue to please the advertisers in the way that they would continue to pay 
all of you who are the creators today. All right. So to do so, uh, we thought that we would introduce what we call the YouTube Partner Program to make sure that we increase the bar of the quality of the quality content available in the platform, so that we can at least um, increase the measures uh, on the quality side uh, for those advertisers. Right. So that's actually why we decided to launch the YouTube Partnerships Program, and. Uh, by launching this, what this means for you as the creator is that would also like be less number of eligible people on the platform, meaning that if you imagine the creator ecosystem as the pie or like as the cake, what this means is the money uh, or like the slice, the pie slice back to all of you would hopefully be a little bit more. Right. So the some some of the benefits that uh, are from YPP are, for example, you can actually access uh, our support team directly. You would be able to use our monetization features like membership. Um, also, like you get your ads directly. Moreover, you would also like be able to access to the copyright match too. Right. So currently, the minimum requirements that we have is you have to have at least 1,000 1, subscribers and also 4,000 valid public watch hours in the past 12 months. Also, uh, we have launched YPP in certain countries. Um, luckily, Singapore and the Philippines are all the launch countries already. And lastly, uh, for us to be able to pay out to you, you would have to also link your channel to the AdSense account. Okay, so next, uh, I would love to give you a little bit more overview on s and which stands for search and discovery, right? So like if you don't remember anything from what I said today, this would actually be the main takeaway from today's session, right? Uh, the goals for our search and discovery system follow just two basic rules. So firstly, we would love to help connect the viewers with the right videos that they are actually uh, willing and like interested in watching, right? And secondly, our long-term goal has always been to maximize the long-term viewer engagement as well as the satisfaction, right? So we do the continuous analysis on every product platform changes that we roll out to make sure that viewers still remain engaged and satisfied with your content. Right. So uh, how can we translate these into a more actionable question? Right. So uh, for uh, a lot of you, you know, like uh, as I work on this team, one of the most common questions uh, that I got is, oh, why is YouTube algorithm penalizing our content? Why does our content doesn't really like take off? You know, uh, some of the common questions would be, oh, if we actually decide to add more, um, add the longer version of the video description, would the algorithm blame and penalize our content, right? So one of the perception change that I would love to drive with everyone here is try to cross out the word algorithm and place that with the word audience. And what do I mean by this? For example, hmm, Punsak, let's say if we actually change the thumbnail strategy, would the algorithm recognize that? So in this scenario, we should replace uh, the uh, we should cross out the word algorithm and replace that with the audience instead. So instead of asking would the algorithm like that idea, try to also like replace that with like uh, the audience wording instead. When you change the thumbnail strategy, would the audience react well to that change, right? So uh, what you have to understand more and what does this uh, perception change tell us or teach us is we have to always know who are the main audience of our channel, right? And you can, YouTube actually provides the data and insights that you need from YouTube analytics. So now um, let's get a little bit deeper into YouTube algorithm, right? Why are we not like, <laughs> externalizing what drives YouTube algorithm. There are two main reasons for this. So first, we also realize that um, they're both good and bad actors in the platform, right? There are those spammers who want to learn what triggers uh, certain things on YouTube and that they can exploit certain benefits. We wanna avoid that. But that's not the only reason. 
the main reason, most importantly, is also we actually take a lot of signals. And to be a little bit more specific, can, can anyone like help me count the zero here? We have more than 80 billion bits of feedback ingested every single day, right? So that's also why we cannot really uh, keep updating you on what are those uh, little bits that trigger the change in our algorithm. But um, so, so that we can give you some uh, frameworks to work with, what we look at and consider includes what viewers watch, what they don't watch, how long do they watch that section for, from which country, where they actually watch it, when they watch it, uh, do they click likes or dislikes on those videos, do they share the content with their friends, do they click on that not interested feedback button. All these signals actually contribute to the design of what suggested video homepage uh, would look like for for each and every um, viewer right so now yes uh, we realize that 80 billion signals that's a lot and now you might think hmm as a youtube creator what can you actually do right so we have two best ops best practices um, that you can actually consider implementing so first uh, you have to always deliver on the promise of the title and your thumbnail in other words, you have to give people what you're advertising for, right? In this very example, the creator is holding up what she's talking about. Um, so let's make sure that uh, when they click on the content, uh, the viewer would be able to see the review of that civil button. And secondly, you should also always avoid being misleading, sensational, or even outrageous. So for example, a lot of people might think that implementing that all caps title would get you the attention. So this sort of stuff would actually turn away the viewers, hurt your chances of even being recommended to the new viewers. So please make sure that uh, we avoid from these clickbait situations. So next, what I would love to cover with all of you is these six areas of search and discovery. So, um, we have six areas that could help you drive these, including search, suggested, home, subscribers, trending, as well as notifications, right? So let's take a deep dive on what each and every um, traffic source looks like. So the first one is search. So this is actually the search engine within YouTube that aims to surface the most relevant videos and channels according to the keywords that you actually put in. So the example that we have here is YouTube Creator Academy, right? So the concept works just the same way how Google search engine works. We strive to sur uh, surface the most relevant content. So the way we actually ranking the videos are based on several factors, including firstly, how well the title description is written, how relevant is it to the user's search inquiries. And beyond that, we also look at what videos have actually driven the most engagement for that particular query and we want to make sure that it's very easy for the viewers to find those by surfacing that on the top search results right so one fun fact i would love to share with everyone is uh, when you actually type into that search box the suggested search terms are usually ranked by the most popular so some of the myths that we have heard out there in the market are my videos have actually fully optimized titles and descriptions. Why don't they rank higher? Well, the truth is search actually considers many, many signals, including the watch time of the particular video for that particular query, right? So who decided if it's optimized or not? It's actually the audience. So what used to be a big hit, what used to work well, for our channel two weeks ago might not work well in today's settings anymore right so as the creator as the content provider what exactly can you do well in the short term you should make sure that you continue to look at analytics so that you can optimize that title and description write the robust description that the creators care to even click and watch that content do a little bit more of the research uh, on what are some of the top keywords that users reach your channel. You can see that in YouTube analytics. Or lastly, even utilize that 
uh, international reach that you have by um, considering implementing the translate translation tools, right? For long terms, um, you should also like know what at the macro level people care about. So um, to do so, you can continue to monitor seasonal trends by using the Google Trends tool. Right. You can actually go to trends.google.com and then you can filter based on the geographical user's interest. So let's say if I want to see what the Thai audience is interested in searching for today, then I can also like have um, and I can also like prioritize my content production according to those themes. So the next uh, search and discovery area is actually suggested video, right? So suggested video on the laptop or on the desktop view is actually the one where it shows on the right hand side. And it would also like auto play after this video finished. And if you're watching it from the mobile devices, it stores video after the comments as you scroll down the device. So what exactly is suggested video? It's actually the collections of videos where viewers might show similar interest in watching next. So what do I mean by this? You can actually find these on the right uh, in terms of the placement uh, on the right on the watch page. And the way it works is we look for the video that viewers watch along with the current video. We look at the correlation of the watch history uh, on the topics that might be related. Aside from that, uh, this could also be the video from both the same channel or from different channels. So what we would love to do as a platform is we offer the variety of the content by also considering at a very uh, viewer specific level on what are some of their past watch histories so that we can actually surface the very personalized recommendations and watch experiences for them. So what are some of the myths in the market? So firstly, my videos got a lot of views from suggested, especially like the older videos. So the truth is, uh, as we already play on the games, you know, like the longer videos that you, uh, the longer time period you have on the platform, of course you have like more opportunities to, to show and to collect that viewership from suggested video a little bit more. So what this means for you is every time when you conduct the analysis of the traffic source, please make sure you always compare the videos over the same period of time. And the common recommendation we have is try to like look at the velocity of the video within the first seven days of the release. Secondly, in terms of what you can do, um, Firstly, you should also be uh, making the strong call to actions so that uh, those viewers uh, are interested in consuming the next content, right? Secondly, you should also avoid any overlong endings. Just imagine yourself being in that movie theater, right? Like uh, not everyone stays until the movie finished um, to watch all the credits unless you have a reason for them to stay back like um, some of the parody videos um, like all those marvel movies love to do right alongside with that you can also consider using features like playlists links interactive features like cards as well as any screen for the long term you can also like try to uh, categorize the type of content that users enjoy watching and start something new by developing the new series out of those uh, formats that you have observed. And then secondly, try to also like look at the macro level, try to consider leaning into the platform wide uh, popular trends. And I have shared with you earlier, the tools that you can do to monitor these trends is actually Google uh, Trends, trends.google.com, right? So next, the third piece of the discovery is actually home. So home is actually what you see first when you open the YouTube app, when you click on that youtube.com and then you hit enter, that's uh, where we are actually uh, taking the users to, right? It is the one-stop destination for YouTube and um, the home page of the individual people tends to also be different from one another because we wanna create the most personalized best guess as to what each user would love to watch the most, right? 
So just for to share some of you the fun fact, every day we actually show over 2 million distinct videos on our home feed. 200 million. That's a big number, right? It's a great place where you can actually get, and the main reason why we are trying to be a little bit more uh, diverse about our offering is that we want to make sure that we open up the chances for maybe like newer creators um, and, and for those people who might not yet subscribe to your channels so that you have the opportunity to connect with your non-subscribers. So the way it works is uh, for home, we actually consider two main things, performance and personalization. In terms of performance, we look at how well the video has actually engaged and satisfied the similar viewers of the similar demographic, among other factors. Secondly, in terms of the personalization based on the user watch and search history, we try to understand how much the users actually watches the channel of the same topic and how many times we are already shown those content uh, to the users. Of course, we, we don't want to show, like, keep repeating showing the same um, content to the same users, right? So, in terms of uh, myths out there in the market, uh, a lot of you might have thought, oh, my videos are actually not showing in home feed, right? So, the truth is, um, there are actually quite different feeds available on YouTube. And um, as the creator, um, you can also like help us educate uh, the users that the two main types of feed, home feed and also subscription feed, right? So on the home feed, uh, it would show the videos that are personalized based on the viewer preferences, uh, meaning that we would show both the videos from the ones that they, from the channels that they have already subscribed versus not. But on the subscription feed, uh, this is where the users can actually scroll through what are some of the content they might have subscribed to in the past. So these are two different things. So one, if the viewers do not uh, see your videos in the feed, try to ask them the follow-up question. Hey, have you already looked at the subscription feed? Is it available right there? So that's one way you can also start troubleshooting in the future, right? So the next myth we also have is YouTube would be much a better place if the subscription feed was actually the default experience for the viewers. Well, the truth is we actually have the product team who tested these multiple, multiple times. And every time when we show and we keep continue to surface like less diverse type of content, it turns out that uh, that satisfaction and that watch um, duration actually decreases and it even leads to much less subscription to the video, right? So if the viewers decided to be bored and never come back to YouTube, this wouldn't just hurt the platform, but everyone in it. So we want to make sure that we give the uh, viewers what they actually want by also still offering some variety right there. So here, in terms of what you can do, you can as, uh, first uh, try to also like help understand and also help educate the users that the two main types of feed right here, the home feed and also the subscription feed. And also try to utilize the home feed as the place where uh, you can get discovered by your non-subscribers. So what this means for you is for uh, every time when the non-subscribers watch your content, try to create the hook try to make sure they, uh, you have this potential to convert them into your eventual subscribers. And for your long term, uh, uploading consistently is the key success factor. So please continue to stick your release schedule. Secondly, of course, you know, like uh, we surface things based on viewers engagement. So what you can do is continue to keep them engaged. Uh, you can continue to revise your strategy based on what's working. And uh, to do so, we have YouTube analytics where you can continue to monitor the real-time trends, uh, the periodic trends, and you can continue to play around and exp experiment with those new strategies. All right. So next on the subscription part, again, uh, how it actually works. In the subscription tabs, viewers would be able to see all the videos from the channel that they're subscribed to. 
And we actually rank these based on the recency factor, meaning that the more you upload, the more recent uh, you, you upload, those would be surfaced to the viewers. All right, so before we start uh, to the myth, uh, I would love to reflect back on some notes um, that we all should be aware of when it comes to things related to subscribers, right? So the rule of thumbs are sub subscribers are just real human beings like all of us, right? Um, before even reading this slide or like sharing the details on this slide, I would love to reflect a little bit on my personal experience. So um, for the past uh, six months, the things I enjoy watching six months ago are completely different from what I enjoy watching today. Right. Six months ago, I wasn't even cooking. Right now, I have been in the lockdown for the longest time and I started to develop my interest in cooking. So now my recommendation feed is quite full of how to cook gyudong properly. And this trend is actually nothing uh, like it, it would have never like surfaced uh, way before six months ago when I continued to eat out so much. And now the type of channel I subscribe to, a lot of them are like okay, home workout, um, like those, you know, like cooking home videos. So again, um, what I try to convey to you is that uh, people develop uh, interest in the content like differently all the time. So remember every time when you have the hypothesis um, about subscribers, try to understand that these are actually the real human beings, just like all of us, right? It's those people who watch, uh, like there's so many videos available on platform right now. Uh, fr from my own perspective, the video that I used to subscribe in the past, I might not watch every video or there might be some channels that I'm a real hardcore fan that I watch every single, uh, every single video that they launch. So what this means for you is try, like, try to not panic and try to study the behaviors of these subscribers and so that you can come up with the right strategies to target or to maximize the engagement from these particular people. So with that in mind, I would love to also start with the first myth. YouTube unsubscribe people from channels. Well, the truth is we never really unsubscribe users. And if that's happened, this is most likely gonna be the bug. And we always do everything we could to prevent that. So just to share a fun fact, we also like have the internal monitoring system to make sure that um, things are working properly um, when it comes to like the subscription and notification system that we have. Secondly, uh, if you upload videos early as unlisted and then you decide to flip that privacy status, then the algorithm might penalize you, right? So the truth is our systems never really penalize the videos that are uploaded earlier. So what matters the most is again, the audience, right? Cross that algorithm and replace that with the audience. That's the first few slides that we talk about. So again, try to understand, you know, like uh, maybe like if you're creating like the trendy content, of course, you want to get that content into the market as fast as possible to capitalize on that trendiness, right? So that might be the main reason why audience might engage a little bit better if you launch it early enough. But um, in terms of the algori uh, algorithm settings, uh, we never really penalize things by just changing the privacy status. So this is definitely a myth. So in terms of what you can do, so again, just call out what you want, right? Like, so uh, we are all like quite uh, consuming a lot of YouTube content right now. Uh, it's very common to see the creators asking the viewers to subscribe, like honestly, and that's, that's nothing wrong with that. So we can continue to ask them directly um, and create that call to action um, to make sure that they hit that subscribe button. And you can also like try to increase the subscriber recruitment when the viewer segment is the largest. Continue to educate the viewers on how they get the video when they're subscribed, you know, uh, subscription and also like ask them to ring on that bell button so they also like get notified as well. 
So on the long term, again, like series um, type of content works quite best. Uh, and the remain reason for that is because viewers would love to continue watching more, right? So just like the soap opera, you know, like a lot of series, uh, we launch it on a weekly basis. Once you started to get people hooked, then they would automatically come back to your own channel. And that's actually how you create engagement. And secondly, understand that unsubscribes are such a normal thing. Again, um, I just mentioned this to all of you, the things I'm interested in six months uh, ago, like I used to subscribe a lot to the perfume channel. Now that I'm in the lockdown, I don't even apply the perfume as much. So I start to unsubscribe some of those channels. So again, like that's just the um, normal audience behavior. So what you should focus on is the insights on who are those active subscribers and how you can actually continue to engage a lot with them. So lastly, on the trending, uh, so on the fifth part, the trending tab, right? So uh, trending actually helps the viewers to quickly see some of the new and popular videos on YouTube. And we actually surface these on the country level. And um, this actually keeps changing every 15 minutes, 15 minutes, right? So what we actually look at is not just uh, the number of nominal view count, we actually look at the rate of the growth in viewership. And we also like look at where they're coming from, right? We also look at some other signals, um, for example, uh, like in each video, uh, what's the rate, what, what's the trajectory growth of that viewership? So let's say I got this question all the time where, oh, like two creators are comparing like uh, their own performances. Look at that channel, like we upload around the same time, they already hit 1 million views. But for me, I already have like 2 million views. Why do they hit a uh, trending tab, but I don't, right? So uh, again, we can also like try to study the behaviors a little bit deeper. It might be the case that uh, since your content is much more well diversified, it might be uh, quite well allocated across different uh, countries evenly. And that might not trigger enough trajectory or like growth rate in the viewership in that particular uh, zone or like country only. So that might also be one of the common reasons why uh, your content is not appearing on trending. And on the all important note, uh, again, if uh, I would challenge every one of you to go back and look at your analytics here, I'm sure that like those contribution of viewership from trending is definitely gonna be less than 5% maximum, right? So what I'm trying to say is it's not really a huge major deal breaker. Um, it's never like the main uh, driver of your traffic. So. Uh, every time as you work with the creators, uh, if you're the MCN creator, uh, or if you're working uh, on, on, or if you're analyzing YouTube analytics and you found that trending uh, is quite low, that's working as intended. All right, so uh, let's go on to some of the myths. So the first myth we have is channels might get preferred placement and you can actually buy a spot on trending. Well, the truth is trending has never been a paid placement and we have never intended to make it <laughs> available for selling. So uh, we always uh, consider the factor um, to make sure that it shows the content that has broad appeal on the given territories or countries. Um, alongside with that, we realized that, you know, we would love to surface some of the upcoming creators and artists. So with that uh, intention in mind, we also like launched the product called Creator on the Rise as well as Artist on the Rise to make sure that we don't look just at the viewership trajectory, but we also like help surface some of the new upcoming uh, creators and artists uh, to, to the uh, audience platform wide as well. So again, uh, in terms of the tips, so what makes it to the trending, right? So like you would have to also make the content that is broadly available or shareable. So if you just make like a very niche video topic, again, like that might just attract to certain uh, groups of people. So uh, you might wanna 
consider pivoting your content to something that is appealing to broader audience. Secondly, you can also like actually check on YouTube analytics. Um, it's actually available under browse feature to see if you have actually made it to trending tab or not. It might just be the case that, oh, my audience is actually concentrated in the US and uh, by the time when my content made it to the trending, I was actually sleeping. So to check this, you can actually go back to YouTube analytics as your source of truth to ensure or to check uh, which videos made it to the trending before. So lastly, on the notifications. Um, again, um, the myth that we always get is subscribers receive notifications for all the channels uh, that they uploaded. The truth is um, this really depends on the viewer settings. So subscribers who ring the bell will receive all the notifications, but those who might just click on subscribe might just get some um, notifications from us based on two main factors, engagement and also opt-out rate. All right, so again, as promised, I would love to leave uh, a few minutes for Q&A session. Um, the rest is a lot of myth that we have collected from the internet, but we would love to make sure we, we take some time to really collect uh, some questions to maybe miss bust uh, some of the things directly from the room. So let me actually go back. Um, so Gina, could you maybe like send in some of the questions that the audience might have? I heard. Oh yeah. Um, so there were a lot of pings, um, and we compiled all of them, and I answered a few. And oh, Elizabeth thank you. from DNA actually had a question: Does yes. a video being put into the same playlist affect the suggested videos too? So adding videos to a playlist does it help with? suggested video association? Great, great question. So um, yeah, that means you're, I'm glad that you're paying attention to every slide that I show. So I think like uh, in terms of playlist, what it does is it helps create the curated uh, watch experience for the users, right? So like instead of just sharing the video ID, if you're sharing the playlist URL, um, what YouTube would do is we would follow the sequence of what you have put in uh, in that playlist, right? So let, let, let's say if you share a uh, series like Titanic series, for example, and then you put it as uh, EP1, EP2, and then you put that in the playlist experience, and then you share the playlist URL, what would happen is the next video play would automatically be the next video um, on that playlist. So in a way, it wouldn't change how suggested video works, but what would it what, what the playlist would do is it would help you control the experience on uh, what video would come next. Okay. Um, I am sharing the screen of the questions collected. So Poonsak, if you can look at my screen or um, make it easier. Unfortunately, it's just, <laughs> would, would you mind share? <laughs> you have way too many participants, so. Okay, so Wan Mi Lai um, asked the question, I feel like non-subscribers seeing video is more than subscribers seeing the videos. And so yes. Mm -hmm. I believe you say that because system is to personalize to non-subscriber behavior. So actually, mm. I think this was a question raised during the, I forgot which section, Wan Mi Lai, do you want to unmute and clarify the question? Hi everyone, I'm Kwang. Swadiha uh, Kunpun. Swadiha, hi. Yes, uh, the question is that I every time I check most of the channel that I take care of, there mm -hmm. are more views from non subscriber audience than mm -hmm. subscriber audience. Mm -hmm. And I try with myself, mm -hmm. I also find found out that um the channel that i'm not following most of the time mm. i see their content more than the channel that i, I already subscribed mm, mm, yes i am not sure what's going on there because uh mm. they're supposed to work as they start to follow the channel mm. they're supposed to see the notification even though 
uh, if I'm not ringing the bells or yes. whatever. <laughs> yes. Right Fine. now, I, I, I fix yeah. it like uh, mm -hmm. most of the channel that I subscribe, I need to ring all the bells to see the notification. Mm. Otherwise, I would just see other channel mm. that I'm not following. Mm. Yes, thank you so much for a very comprehensive questions. So um, to make it a little bit more um, uh, easier to patterns, I would love to break the questions down into like the three main things that I heard Kun Guang is speaking, right? So the first thing is uh, uh, Kun Guang has actually observed the trends where majority of the watch time from the channels that she managed are actually from the non-subscribers. Uh, Yes, um, for the first trend, uh, I totally agree. So yeah, like we started to observe the trends where uh, majority of the watch time is actually being driven from um, the non-subscribers. So again, like there are multiple reasons for this, right? So firstly, uh, if you recall what I mentioned in the first uh, game question, the main um, drivers of our traffic is actually on suggested video. And what matters right there is not actually the subscription status, right? Suggested video is driven by uh, performance and personalization. It depends on how well, like what's the correlation of the whole watch experience on what's coming next. And then we would surface the video based on the behaviors of similar group of people. Right. And secondly, we also look at personalization. So things that you search might not be uh, from the channels that uh, you have already subscribed to. So um, that could also explain why um, majority of the watch time driver might not have come directly from from the subscribers. Right. And the second things that I uh, heard Kun Guang uh, uh, speaking about is also on notification. And again, um, how it works, how notification works is that uh, we really like look at uh, how the viewers actually uh, set their, conf like uh, how the viewers configure their settings. So if they configure in a way that, yes, I love this channel so much, please send all the notifications, we would do so for such uh, viewers. But if they just subscribe and they might uh, choose uh, not to like, they didn't tick to accept all the notifications, then we would consider the engagement rate as well as the, uh, what is it called? Engagement rate and also the opt-out rate, right? So um, again, I, when we are talking about notification, it's also not the major driver, but it's rather like the kickstart of the traffic where uh, we just uh, show uh, or like we are, we are trying to bring awareness to the users on, okay, this content is now available. So, um, yeah, does that answer your question? So it means that if we, we, we release the video, is we have to count that uh, where most of the kickstarts came from and how far it is? Um, I, content? Yeah, so I think like as the best. Yes, have, um, as the best practice to optimize for your uh, performances, I think like uh, essentially it comes to understanding your audience, right? You should also like try to understand what drives that majority of your traffic. If it's suggested video, try to understand what that suggested video is, what's, uh, what are some of the particular video trends or like content in nature that might drive uh, majority of the interest and then try to focus on creating such content and offer those uh, more to to your uh, audience. So um, yeah, so in, in terms of notification, one of the another best practice that I would love to share is maybe create a title that uh, would create the sense of urgency, you know, like uh, try to make sure that once they see the notification, it's something that uh, the viewers would really love to watch it and watch it now. So yeah, that's that's another thing you can drive the uh, engagement rate as well as the opt-out rate from the notification. Thank you. All right. I know we are slightly over time, but I can stay back for a few more questions if all of you like. Uh, any next question, Gina? 
Um, one second. So maybe we'll leave it. We leave time for one more question. Actually, we compiled all of them and mm. we'll try to send follow up notes with if it's externally shareable uh, with answers mm. to many of your questions. So, yes. a so <laughs> yeah, Be before before we uh, end, um, this actually reminds uh, us of the last thing that I would ask you all to do for us. So if you can actually help mark your attendance at this website, as well as uh, access this QR code uh, to record your attendance, that would be much, much appreciated. And we would also like be sending up the follow-up materials to those emails that you have registered and sent the forms here. So please make sure you, you do the form so that you don't miss out on the follow-up uh, resources that we would be sending to you as well. All right. Okay, cool. well, let me ping the link over. Um, yeah, I can actually, do that. I'm doing that, and then I will ask the question for Kunsak. Um, yes. So Tiffany asked, um, actually, Tiffany from Media Corp. Hi. Uh, Hi, Tiffany. Relatively new. Um, does uploading multiple videos at once or um, in a day affect its discoverability. So I think it's about, you know, frequency mm. of uploading mm. and its impact on discoverability. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, great, great question, Tiffany. So I think, again, um, the best person to answer this would be the audience, right? Depending on also like what type of uh, content, right? So like, let's say if you upload variety of content despite being at the same period of time uh, what would happen is notification would be triggered uh, to the users uh, whether or not they decide to click and open that video totally depends on on the uh, audience so um, from from to to system systematically answer your question uh, I think like as long as the content is quite diverse and if it's the common topic, that your audience or your fan base are most interested in, then I don't think it would hurt your performances. Uh, but if, let's say, if it's the same type of content, so let's say it's the series and then you upload behind the scene video right after, maybe I would just focus on watching the series first and maybe deprioritize the behind the scene video later, right? So, um, and at times I might forget to also like watch the behind the scenes series. So I think like this is where, uh, or this is the question of also like content uh, programming. So this is also why content programming is important. So my recommendation here is also like try to take a step back and be in that audience choose. And let's say what sequence of content offering would make the most sense for them. And I hope that answer your questions. All right, I think we have to wrap it up now. Um, thank you everyone for joining and thank you Kunsak for being such All a right. presenter. And we'll be sending out invitations for next week's session. Actually, I forgot I didn't even have my camera on. Um, so <laughs> next week on Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday, Eric Chen will be presenting on getting started on YouTube. It's a very interesting course. On Thursday, uh, Chen Wen, who's a partner technology manager, will be presenting on live streaming during COVID-19 times for beginners. So both sessions are for beginners next week. So please make sure to register. I will be sending an invite to you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Hope the session is helpful, everyone. Thank you so much. And looking forward to seeing all of you again.